Welcome to the 5-Minute History Channel's two-part story presented in two videos of the story of the Panama Canal. The story starts much earlier than most people understand, and the initial work on what became the canal was not done by America. Before we start, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so we can continue to grow and bring you more interesting videos. Now we hope you enjoy and learn some new things about the history of the Panama Canal. The story of the Panama Canal begins long before the first shovel broke the earth. For centuries, explorers and merchants dreamed of a way to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, bypassing the treacherous journey around Cape Horn. The first recorded discussions of a canal across Central America date back to the early 16th century, when Spanish conquistadors considered using the region's natural waterways to create a passage. Even before that, Indigenous groups and early civilizations recognized the potential of the isthmus as a vital trade route. The idea of an artificial waterway linking the two oceans was not exclusive to the Spanish. Ancient records suggest that as early as the 6th century BCE, the idea of creating a canal-like passage was discussed by pre-Columbian civilizations who saw the strategic advantage of controlling a passage between the Great Seas. Later. In the 16th century, King Charles V of Spain ordered surveys to determine whether a canal could be built through Nicaragua or Panama. However, engineering challenges and a lack of advanced construction technology made the dream impossible at the time. During the 18th century, as European powers vied for global dominance, interest in the canal resurfaced. Spain, France and Britain all recognized the potential of a canal through the Central American Isthmus as a key to controlling trade and military movements. In 1788, a Spanish expedition surveyed potential routes, but once again the immense costs and engineering challenges put the idea on hold. The dream of a canal was deferred, but never forgotten. Fast forward to the 1880s, and the dream was revived. A French entrepreneur and visionary, Ferdinand de Lesseps, the man behind the successful Suez Canal, turned his sights to Panama. His confidence was unmatched. After all, he had already conquered one waterway, why not another? But the jungle had other plans. Unlike the relatively flat desert of Egypt, Panama was a brutal landscape, thick with disease-ridden mosquitoes, deep tropical swamps, venomous snakes, and mountainous terrain that seemed impossible to tame. Some workers reported seeing jaguars prowling near their camps at night, adding to the constant threat of the jungle. Despite massive financial backing, Lesseps and his team grossly underestimated the engineering challenge. They envisioned a sea-level canal like the Suez, failing to account for the torrential rainfall and the unpredictable Chagres River, which could rise over 30 feet in a single day during the rainy season. Excavation efforts were further hampered by landslides, which continually destroyed completed work and buried workers alive. Then came the silent killers, yellow fever and malaria. These diseases ravaged the workforce, with thousands of laborers succumbing to illness in a matter of weeks. Entire camps were left abandoned as fear spread among the workers. With no understanding of how diseases spread, Lesseps' team failed to implement effective sanitation or mosquito control measures. Unfortunately, at this time, it was still not understood that mosquitoes were the problem, spreading malaria like wildfire. Doctors tried various ineffective treatments, but the toll continued to rise. The death toll climbed to an estimated 22,000 workers. Many were buried in mass graves, their deaths largely ignored in the frenzied rush to continue construction. By 1885, Reports of the disastrous conditions began reaching investors in France, and confidence in the project plummeted. The venture was bleeding money, and soon, funds ran dry. Engineers and investors began losing faith, and in 1889, after a staggering loss of $287 million, the project collapsed in scandal. Ferdinand de Lesseps, once hailed as a national hero, was now seen as a fraud. He, along with his son and several key figures, including Gustav Eiffel of the Eiffel Tower fame, was convicted of corruption and mismanagement. Lesseps was sentenced to prison, though his declining health spared him from serving time. The dream of a canal seemed lost. 
For over a decade, the unfinished canal sat abandoned, swallowed by the jungle. The equipment left behind was quickly overtaken by vegetation, rusting under the relentless humidity. The once bustling construction sites became eerily quiet, with only the sounds of nature reclaiming the land. But across the ocean, a rising power was taking notice. The United States, eager to expand its influence, saw an opportunity. If they could take control of the failed project, they could reshape global trade forever. But first, they had to strike a deal. Be sure to look for part two of the story of the Panama Canal here on the 5 Minute History Channel. Again, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We will see you next in part two.